Hey, what's up? I'm Jordan for the Ready Set, and you're watching Typical Video Girls. Hey guys, this is Sharfaz. This is Rissa. And we are Typical Video Girls sitting here with Jordan from the Ready Set. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. You look all bundled up in your yeah. cool ass parka. Somebody <laughs> the other day told me that it looked like a panda, so I feel like this is a panda jacket. That's super sweet. I, I took that as a compliment. You know? Pandas are pretty awesome. They're pretty awesome, but yeah, it's a lot colder here than I anticipated. Where were you before tonight? Uh, San Antonio, which was also cold. Oh, well, yeah. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I've been to Texas like a ton of times when it's cold and I always forget that it actually does get really cold here. Everyone forgets. Yeah. Everyone forgets that it gets cold here. It's nice though. It's, it's, it's not, we've, we haven't had like any snow or anything on the tour yet, so it's been like kind of cold but not too bad. Well, you're ending it in Vermont, so it might get cold there. Vermont? Yeah, right? Oh, no, I've, I, I was like, whoa, wait. No, I have a show in uh, December, like a random like one-off show, kind of like post-tour that just Oh, okay. Up, so. That, yes, probably snow for that, but yeah. we're actually ending this one in San Diego, so. Oh, that's going to be nice. I'm not anticipating a lot of snow <laughs> in San Diego, hopefully. Cool. Oh, jealous. Are you going to go to SeaWorld? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm probably going to go to San Diego, play the show, and then just drive back home, because I live like two or three hours north of there, so. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Get to see my, my pets. <laughs> How many pets do you have? I have a cat and a dog. What is your kitty's name? Nonsense. <laughs> really? Yeah. What is your dog's name? Backpack. Those are the cutest names ever. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that's, that's my, uh, that's my, my side job is coming up with animal names. I want, I, I got a lot of strange looks when I told everyone I wanted to name my puppy Lipstick. That's a great name for a puppy. I know, right? It's really good. What kind Haters. of dog is it? Oh, I was going to get a Yorkie, so. Okay. Um, when I do get her, I'm going to name her Lipstick. Oh, so it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. This is a plan. This is like a blueprint of what might happen. So the Outsiders tour is almost over. Mm -hmm. Like, what's been your favorite moment so far? Um... I don't know. The whole thing's been uh, been pretty awesome. Um, I really like playing in New York. That's always like my favorite my favorite show. Usually of every tour. Um, but there's been like some really like surprisingly like just awesome awesome crowds. Like I didn't really know what to expect because we haven't headlined in a while and like I didn't know what like the crowd reaction would be like to some of the newer songs. And it's just been like kind of just like a really awesome surprise every day. So. Yeah, really you did come out with The Bad and the Better, right? Earlier yeah. this year? Yeah, yeah, in May. What's been your favorite song off of it to perform so far? Um, there's a song on it called Castaway that I really like playing a lot. And mm -hmm. I think the thing that's fun about it on this tour is that, like, for most of those songs, it's the first time we've played them. So it's okay. cool to, like, see that people have, like, reacted to it and to, like, see people, like, singing along and, like, getting excited about stuff that's not, like, the single or something. Because that's always kind of, like, the, I don't know, it's, like, a bigger deal to me when people are, like, really into songs that are, like, the non main single type thing. So they actually you're like, okay, you listened through yeah, this totally. and yeah, you appreciated yeah. it and that's awesome. Yeah, totally. What's the craziest shit you've seen on tour? Um like a physical shit? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen one? Uh, not like just not just not in the green room or anything. Not like on the on the ground outside. <laughs> I don't think there's any in here right now. I think we're clear. Um, well, on this Watch tour, your step just in case, yeah, though. That's kind of a fun thing we like to do is just leave little landmines all over the, the <laughs> venue for people to deal with. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Nothing really too crazy on this tour, but uh, I have one favorite story that I like to tell. Um, from Warp Tour this summer, I was standing out in the, bu the bus lot at like 2 in the morning just talking to... Uh, just talking. I think I was talking to uh, our drummer, Travis... Um, and you might have been there too. Shoe might have been there. Um, but we were just standing talking. This guy cruises by on a skateboard, just completely naked, except for his shoes and socks. It just like full speed, just like boom, he just like zooms by, really casually too, not like being funny or anything. He's just a naked dude. Like he's somebody <laughs> on the tour, just cruising around. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then he comes by a second time. He does a second pass on a bike this time. So he's just oh doing God. all these different, uh, these different um, sports. <laughs> naked just at two in the morning around the bus naked lot. sport and it was a very subtle thing it wasn't like anything where i was like whoa what's going on i was just like huh that guy's up to something weird and i i don't know what it is and i don't know if anyone really 
notice even. Most people were just like. It, it was just like warp tour. It was just yeah. like ah, naked so. guy. It gets, it gets <laughs> weird. It's really fun though. It's a fun tour. Off your latest album, what's a song that you've written that really, I guess, means the most to you? Um, probably there's one called "Already Happy Now." It's my favorite on mm-hmm. the album, just because it's kind of about like being, I guess, kind of like stopping and like taking in all the positive things that are happening around you, and you know, like not getting too caught up in like future plans or like the past or anything like that and just kind of appreciating everything right in the moment which I think is a really really important thing to do that gets overlooked sometimes and I think can have a pretty bad effect on you mentally so it's kind of about like that realization of the importance of that and uh, at least that's like a big kind of thing to me. So So appreciating the moment versus like worrying about the past or the future. Yeah yeah just being really like present and everything just worrying about exactly what's around you and nothing else i feel like that's a more productive way to to live so that's what that song's about i like that i like that a lot very cool what was your favorite moment or what has been your favorite moment from high school good old high school days well so far my favorite moment in high school i don't know if i'm gonna have to go back to high school or not anytime soon but the wording on the wording on that question is really funny to me like, <laughs> so far what's been your favorite moment in high school um I didn't like high school very much, honestly. I was really, like, quiet and um, just kept to myself. And I was just, like, that person in the hall who was just, like, walking, just doing my thing, just super, like, loner or whatever. Um, But some of it was cool. Um, I honestly (laughs) don't even know. Probably the days I didn't have to go to high school were the days I liked the most. Really? Was was the best day the day you graduated? (laughs) Yeah, I actually debated even going to, like, the ceremony. I was like, I don't really want to do that. It's, like, four hours and, like... But I went. I'm glad I went. I went to prom for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, what did you do I, after prom? I went back home, and uh, I didn't go to any parties. I didn't, see, that was the thing is I never went to a party in high school. Like, really? All, all I did in high school was was just try to do music stuff. So every weekend I had no, like, social life other than playing shows and going to shows. Like, that's the only thing I did. So all my friends were, like people in like the music scene and like the like local band world and stuff which now I think is probably good because it kept me really focused on only that kind of growing up so I guess that's positive because it got me out of my town and touring really fast um, like a week after I graduated so um yeah do you have any girls like hit you up from high school that you don't even remember and they're like hey Jordan remember us like actually like whenever stuff started to kind of go better for me like whenever like songs started being on the radio and stuff a lot of people kind of just like crept up like <laughs> that was around the time when I stopped using my personal Facebook because I was like this isn't fun anymore because like all of a sudden all these people are friends with me that I never really talked to and like obviously I was never like we're not cool because you're just coming out of the woodwork like I was nice to everyone but it's just weird because like it actually is kind of a thing like people kind of like creep around a yeah. little bit more and, and I don't know I think everyone like means well when they do that type of thing but um I don't know. I, I honestly don't keep in touch with a lot of people from, from then. And uh, the ones that I do keep in touch with, I actually am around like a ton. Because a lot of people I kind of went to school with moved out to where I live now in L.A. And I end up hanging out with them a bunch. But um, I don't know. I have like a pretty small circle of friends ultimately. That's good. Very cool. Yeah. yeah quality over quantity, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. What was your favorite TV show growing up and why? My favorite TV show? Hmm... I don't really watch a lot of TV, but I guess if we're talking like, if we're talking like growing up, like I was way, well, I was like personally more a Nickelodeon centric kid over Disney. Like I always thought Nickelodeon stood in a higher place to me than Disney did. So I guess if we're going to go back to that, to that era, I was always like into, um, I don't know, I liked Rocco's Modern Life a lot. I liked, um, I don't know, just any of those like classic Nickelodeon shows. But uh, as soon as I got over like the cartoon thing, I, I got pretty into like, Animal Planet and stuff. Like, I really like animal shows. I don't know why. I think animals are really cool, so... Uh, well, you yeah. do have two of them, so I, I would hope them. you think they're pretty yeah. cool. What's your favorite animal? <laughs> My favorite animal? That's tough. I like lots. Um, I like cats. Uh, cats are cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's my favorite, though. I think... Oh, man, I think about this sometimes a lot, and I don't have a favorite animal. If you could be any animal, which animal would you be? Probably some kind of bird. Just because of the flying thing, I feel like. So you wouldn't yeah, be a panda. Probably not, because then I'd, I'd be stressed all the time. Because I'd be like, "There's not a lot of pandas around. I'm like, <laughs> the only panda. If I get caught, they're gonna put me in a zoo, and I'm gonna be like the big panda exhibit. Because everybody loves the panda exhibit. 
I like I, I like the fan exhibit too. I'm not gonna lie. So. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't want to be that that guy. So I don't know. Some kind of a bird, maybe a dragon. That's not a real thing though. So. It could be. <laughs> could be. I know dragons. Aren't there dragons that live in water? Oh, uh, like a sea dragon. You mean? Yeah. Talking sea dragons now. Uh, I don't know. That sounds like some. That sounds like something from like a pirate movie, maybe. But I don't know. Maybe it'd be uh ooh there's uh there's narwhals those like whales with the unicorn yeah. horns those are kind of those are kind of fresh I don't know maybe one of those <laughs> and if anyone makes you mad you can just be like you, you see mad. yeah exactly exactly <laughs> ah, that's yeah. it what have been like some of what like I guess like your biggest influences and how have they influenced like your creative process in your music now um that's tough I like I don't know like I grew up listening to music that was a lot different than anything that I do now. Like I grew up listening to like punk bands and like metal bands and like hardcore and stuff like that. So that was all I played growing up. It was just that kind of thing. Like I was always playing drums. And I started doing this and I got into like some like poppier stuff and more like indie, more like melodic, pretty stuff. More like poppy things like Save the Day and Copeland and May and um, Postal Service, Death Cab for Cutie and things like that. Like those kind of bands like kind of shifted my interest, I think, into songwriting a little bit more. Okay. And, um, so I started doing that, but I was always really inspired by like going to like hardcore shows and seeing bands like that, like grinding it out and like go going on tour and just like constantly being on the road and like playing to people and like building themselves up that way. So I think like the combination of those two things made me want to like just <coughs> maybe just want to go on tour and just like do give it your all. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I thought that was really cool that they were just like building it themselves, and um, that's kind of that was kind of my like mentality I guess when so I started. So would you say that like over the years like you know you've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger over the years um would you say you still have a lot more control over the creative process of your songs and songwriting yeah. and everything? Definitely definitely the, the songs and everything it's always kind of been that that way for me like there's I mean like I've like written with other people and like worked with producers and stuff but at the end of the day it always has to be like kind of like my thing or else it comes I always felt like it comes across as like dishonest or kind of like just not real feeling so um yeah i mean i've always had pretty much total control over anything like ready set related like the music obviously um all of like the photography stuff all of like the imaging stuff like all the merchandise designs have always been me all like the like all like the stage design and like props on this tour all stuff that i like designed and even like the lighting and everything i program myself so everything is like just yeah. like very cool so you're very hands-on so it really reflects what you're trying to bring to yeah. the table yeah that's 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 the intention but but then obviously i have like i have um a band when we play shows and my mentality with that has always been like i want whoever plays with me to like kind of like want to like be able to like take control of their own like parts and stuff like basically just like send them what i've done and then just be like go crazy with it and you know, okay. play whatever you want kind of over it and just make it your own sort of so i guess in that way i kind of like to you know just let everyone like take as much uh pride in it as they want that's awesome. Very cool. So if, let's just say, we're not saying this is actually going to happen, but let's just say you woke up one day and you found yourself trapped in a woman's body, what would your day look like? I don't know. I mean, that's a suspect question. I mean, what, am I, what do I do? I mean, I first of all have like, I don't know, like there'd probably be like this mild panic attack and I'd be like, I'd probably instantly go to like WebMD and I'd be like, does this happen a lot? And like, What's, Am I crazy? <laughs> like, what's like the pro? Like, how do I reverse this? Like, I probably have to go find like a some sort of like a witch doctor of sorts, and, uh, <laughs> see if we can we can reverse this. Just or you know maybe I would just adapt to it, and I would uh, uh, I would start a, a career as a female artist, and I would uh, I I don't know. Actually, I don't know. That's a weird thing. What's what is your day consist? <laughs> I wake up, do my hair look go through and try to find like a matching bra to my underwear it's, it's <laughs> hard being a girl I mean, those are all things i do now anyway so i, I, I think i think the first thing i would do is like check around the corner and be like ashton am i getting punked like, yeah is he still punking these days i don't think so i don't think he is but i mean come on he's the original i think who's, we need to start that who's punking now i think they just get different guest stars to Jeez, like punk each other i'm gonna do that that's what i want to do mtv <laughs> if you're watching, he's interested. Oh, I'd be the worst at it. <laughs> I would just like I'd see them getting stressed out, and I'd be like, "Oh, I feel like, like, dang, they're actually getting sad," and like they start to cry, and I'd be like, "I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't very fun." Go out and give him a hug. I'm I sorry. Just, I would just be ridden with guilt, and I'd be like, "This person's gonna hate me when this is over with, even if it is just being punk." I don't. Know. I'm, a, I'm a baby. I don't know. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> do you know how to cook, Jordan? 
I can cook some stuff. Really? What's what's something mean that you can stir up? You look like me. <laughs> 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 um, I like to make omelets. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's what I like to make. That's well. That's actually all I make is omelets. Omelets. Do yeah. you cook for everyone on tour? You make them omelets? Uh, no. Those the, the omelets are a very rare delicacy, only to be enjoyed by me personally in, in solitude. There you go. So the, the, there, it's your personal <laughs> omelet. No, I'm not. I'm not actually good at. I'm not actually good at cooking. I don't think. But there's like I, I know how to cook things, and I, like if I cook like any sort of like meat thing or anything, I, I don't understand like flavor combinations or spices at all. So I just dump a bunch of like spicy stuff in everything. Like, yeah, here's like some cayenne pepper, and here's some like Cajun seasoning. It just ends up tasting like a salty, spicy like mess, but it's fine. So, um, yeah, that's my. As yeah. long as it's edible, right? Yes, and it's edible, yes. My, my uh, cooking isn't necessarily my forte, but I'm not the worst. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, like, we won't get Gordon Ramsay up in, up in here on you or anything. Probably, that, that wouldn't work, right? Probably not. Probably <laughs> not well, at least. It's okay. You could just, like, sing him into, like, like a slumber and then a, just, Gordon like, s- yeah, exactly. And just, like, kind of sneak away and be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they do that on that show? Do people ever get away with that? I don't think so. But, I mean, you could be the first. Could be the first. You could be the first. You could just show up with, like, a guitar or something <laughs> and just be like, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> we wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. For hanging out with us today. Are we you look excited to on stage? Yes. We now, definitely look forward to that. Me too. Now's the time of evening where I have to, like, wake up. And, like, because <laughs> I'm usually, like, awake in the day, and then around, like, 5 or 6 o'clock, I'm just, like, really tired. So now I have to, like energize and get ready to go Do you guys have a mantra that you guys perform or like a group huddle before getting on stage um sometimes sometimes we we like we t- i don't know we <laughs> say uh something about dracula and then wave our hands around like we're vampires yeah. spooky we're, we're a very spooky bunch <laughs> things get very weird i mean we did have morticia over there so yeah, and then sean's got Headscarf and it looks like Joan Rivers getting ready for her close up or something. <laughs> you, look, you, look very, you look very Vogue over there. You look, like, you look like somebody I would see in Paris, maybe. You just need like a martini. That's it. Yeah, thank you so much. Cool. We definitely, with us. yeah, we look forward to your show. And fun. this is Jordan of the Ready Set. We're typical video girls. Until next time. Bye, guys. Forever, all through us forever, and we'll never stop.